Hello, Senior Stoner fans. It's the real Senior Stoner back at you for your Hato E2 H2 E rig with diamonds. Dab of the day. Hello, everybody. It's the real Senior Stoner. As always, if you enjoy today's video, you know what to do. I have my Puffco Peak and my Sicko Adam out just in case we have a problem. I like to be backed up. How do you deal with rejection? Many of us have dealt with rejection over our lives, and it hasn't been fun. So there's got to be better ways to deal with it. And you know what? Rejection hurts. But it doesn't have to hold us back from living our lives. We've all been rejected at one point or another. Whether it's from a love interest, a job telling us they don't want us, or friends. Whichever kind of rejection we're facing, the fact of the matter, it hurts. And when you put it all out on the line and you get that heartbreaking no, it's enough to make anyone want to stop trying to put themselves out there for anything. When you let rejection hold you back, though, it can wreak havoc on all aspects of your personal life. It can even lead to debilitating conditions like depression and anxiety. So, there are ways that we can deal with rejection. And we can help come out of it stronger even. Getting rejection doesn't have to be the end or be all. And the experience can actually help us in the long run to be more resilient in our lives. So if we're wondering about rejection from friends, from family, from coworkers, a crush, well, you know what? we'll be able to bounce back a little bit better once we discuss the following. You need to understand why rejection hurts so much. And before you learn how to deal with rejection in dating, at work, at home, the first thing to remember is that there's a reason rejection stings and hurts. And it's not because you're weak or sensitive. In fact, there's a evolutionary reason why we desperately need other people to accept us. Our need for connection goes back to ancient history cavemen when people relied on being in groups to survive. When somebody rejected, there was a very primal piece to it. It goes against everything we feel like we need for survival. But beyond evolutionary stuff, our response to rejection also depends on something called our attachment styles, or the models in which we develop our relationships with other people. People who interact with their caregivers in a healthy way as infants usually develop secure attachment style in which they view themselves as being worthy and lovable, like my kids. But those with insecure attachment styles come to generally view themselves as unlovable, unworthy, and inadequate. That's me. It's no wonder that some of us have had a hard time getting through rejection. It's been wired since we've been born. We need to take a step back and practice some self-care. In the immediate aftermath of any rejection, we're not really in that space to think about it because we're in so much pain. Anger and hurt might be the immediate reactions after re rejection. But contrary to popular belief, releasing your anger, screaming, hitting, punching a bag, does not help bring the negative emotion down. In fact, it's likely to increase it. So in those moments, self-care is truly important. Activities like exercising, going for a run, meditating are great ways to get in a balanced place. So you think more clearly about a situation instead of getting into that emotional thinking rut. And if the activities aren't your thing, anything that makes you feel good, anything that helps you calm down, baking, bathing, listening to music, smoking a joint, it doesn't matter. Anything you can do to calm yourself down and take some time to process those emotions. After you've taken time to calm down and get grounded, it's important to pay attention to what you're feeling. And a great way may be to write it down. Make a little journal. Get some distance from what's happening because you're not all that tangled up when you put it in writing. 
And when you're paying attention to your emotions, remember, it's never helpful to feel like you shouldn't feel a certain way. Emotions are never right or wrong. They just are. We have to remember that. And we have to practice self-affirmations. Beyond simply acknowledging our emotions, we need to start our morning, start our day off by thinking about what makes us us. What make you you? You've got to hold on to the things that are part of you. Those self-affirmations are stronger just by recognizing who you really are and how you identify yourself in the face of self-doubt with rejection. You've got to pay attention to the way you're feeling. It's very important. We need to find ways to spend more time with the people we love. When we're faced with rejection of any type, one of the most important things is to remember that there's more to life than just one rejection from one person or thing, and that there are plenty of other people who are on your side. Remind yourself that you haven't been completely shunned by the world. Spend some quality time with friends and family, and make sure you're still feeling connected with the other people around you. That's critical when you're trying to figure out how to deal with rejection. You might want to turn to your friends for moral support. It's incredibly important. Connection is critical because it reminds us of the things we can't remember in that moment. It reminds us how lovable we are, how really lovable we are, that people care about us, and that we are worthy. Just think about them. That's right. Even if you can't actually spend time with those people, think about them. Picture them. Get them on the phone. Get them on the internet. Sometimes, just by repeating or seeing a picture, you can get that feeling into your heart. When a difficult situation comes up and you feel rejected, go back to the image of that person, even if it's in your mind, and feel comforted by them because you've been practicing feeling comforted. And remember to be kind to yourself. We tend to beat ourselves up over the things that might let us to be rejected, but that habit causes us to feel worse. The first thing a lot of people do when they get rejected is to be unkind to themselves and they start coming up with all kinds of ideas how they're bad and wrong. Don't do it. Instead of doing that, thinking about what went wrong and dealing with the negative, which is ruminating, look at the situation more objectively and ask yourself if there's anything you can learn from the experience and point compassion at yourself. We've got to engage in healthy habits if we've been rejected. Whether we're trying to figure out how to deal with rejections from a family, a coworker, it doesn't matter. Sometimes it's just the everyday things at home or work that influence us how to respond to rejection. Maybe we just didn't get whatever we were looking for. You see, we can go back in a difficult situation to the person who helped us and we will be able to think that we'll be able to get through it. You see, you got to eat well, you got to sleep well, you got to have a healthier lifestyle. And then you can deal with the more difficult things that happen in life because we just cannot let rejection stop us. That is the skill. The skill you learn from rejection is to never let it stop you from your future. Getting rejected is an inevitable part of life. Every single successful person has experienced it at one time or another. So the next time you're turned down for a date, you don't get the job you applied for, somebody hangs up on you, remind yourself, remind yourself that it happens to absolutely everyone. And instead of getting devastated and beating yourself up about it, and beating yourself down about it, say to yourself, you know what? I got to move forward. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to realize that the most important thing is to not sit in the rejection, but to say to yourself, is there anything I can learn from that experience? And then what can I do moving forward? Where can I go? 
you need to take the rejection and move it forward. That is correct. You take rejection, you move it forward, you turn it in, believe it or not, to a positive thing. That rejection actually stimulated you to do something. It motivated you. That's right. Rejection. A motivator. Isn't that incredible? It really is incredible. Here we go. At 415 degrees, the Hato E-Rig. Electronic, digital, and almost instant heat up. Here we go. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Cheers. Oh, my. <coughs> like the colors. <coughs> also. Phew, that packs a punch. And it was charged. Look, we had a very important discussion today, everybody, about how do you handle rejection. I can tell you one thing for sure. You will be rejected in life. And I'll tell you one thing for sure also. You will be fine. You will take that rejection, learn from what we talked about here, and you'll be off on your day dancing away. Have a great one. This has been The Real Senior Stoner. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Cheers, everybody.